Okay, actually it looks like it's staying on. Maybe I should, uh, one second, let's get this going. Here. Let me see. Hey, Paul. Hi, everyone. It's you again. Okay, actually, it does look like I, like I'm recording, so that's pretty good. Um, okay, let's let's try that again. So, so global collab collaborative workflows in FreeCAD is what this is about, and we focus on collaborating between people who of different skill levels, different locations, um, using widely accessible tool chains. That's that's the idea. So compared to Compared to a normal organization, you have you have some proprietary CAD. You might have some advanced architecture workflows, perhaps some architecture or design, any any kind of CAD workflow where you're designing with your team. But typically, you don't really care about um, expanding that like beyond the boundaries of your organization because your work is proprietary. You're not designing open source tractors or cars. You're not designing open source products. So the kind of questions we ask here are slightly different. Because we're saying, how do you engage in a collaborative, open process that's also learnable, doesn't really take too too much infrastructure in terms of computing power, um, or very expensive CAD and very advanced workflows where you really have to understand a whole workflow um, explicitly and deeply uh, as a professional CAD person. So how do you simplify that? And so we we work on. On, on that topic of how, how do you simplify this? How do you make it accessible? Make it accessible to more people, and uh, make it universally, uh, basically to to create the, a platform where collaborative design becomes the norm that anyone can do without. Like right now, there's definitely the technical barrier where people cannot uh, do that process. On one, the the tools are coming along in an open source world. I would say. Uh, Blender and FreeCAD and open source architecture, there's uh, the capacity to do a full collaborative workflow is just happening. There's the introduction of the IFC, um, I forget what that is, that's an IFC format where the architecture guys are saying, hey, let's create a format which is openable, a universal open standard that's openable by anybody so that you don't have like one CAD version like whatever Rhino or AutoCAD or whatever uh, that cannot you cannot open the files from the other different packages there's work happening right very actively like I think the architecture is is leading that with for example IFC what happened to my uh, video thanks yeah okay I should be I should be back here what is that? video pumped out okay there we go um, the the collaborative workflows I think are in, in the in infancy including in a proprietary world mm -hmm. what I mentioned about the IFC format in the architecture there's definite movement and strong motion for it. I was just studying this because we're getting into the architecture program hardcore next year with a seed home version 2 and we're exploring this so how do we communicate all our CAD so uh, if people don't have FreeCAD, how can they also communicate to others? Well, there is a format in the architecture world called IFC that does that. There's BIM, there's Building Information Modeling, where OpenBIM is becoming a prominent thing. OpenBIM and Open IFC. There's a lot of really good development right now, even within Blender. I was just looking at some videos where you c you can uh, do OpenBIM work, meaning do more advanced features of visualization, cross sections, different views. 2D, two, generating 2D from 3D is pretty much well established. Um, and getting the when when we did when we're doing the CD go home work right now, we're noticing that okay, the the standard architecture tools or CAD tools are not available for us to generate those easy blueprints for for the building department. Right, you need all those elevations, the plumbing, the 2D, mm -hmm. the the 3D whatever uh, so so we're exploring that in a, in a very deliberate way right now now the the one aspect that I think 
is also missing quite a bit right now is, is the larger collaborative workflows. And that's, that's, that's the kind of process we're developing. So to summarize it, uh, to give you this good overview of what's happening here, we want to make public design just commonly accessible. It's a thing you do like using computers or Google Docs or email today. I think, I think the same thing can happen with collaborative CAD design. Uh, I think it's a matter of time. The tools are definitely getting better and better. Like FreeCAD, there's tons of active development. That's the open source CAD package that we're learning today. Uh, Blender also is huge development going in an open architecture community where, where they're developing architecture workflows within Blender. And you can take a look at, I actually want to show you one link. Um, there's a good overview. If you go to my, uh, I just post this on my log. When I was looking at architecture documents, I, I ran into all these topics of how do you uh, interoperate. So, so what are some of the issues? Like some of the issues that we face in terms of open, so you can take a look at the uh, link I put in the chat box. Uh, some of the issues are, for example, DWG or like um, AutoCAD format. It's proprietary. Like you don't even know how to interpret the data. There's there's two-dimensional LibreCAD, which is open source, which just reverse engineered a way to import DWG files, so you can work with DXF files. That's awesome. That's true. But it's like if you look at that, like how crazy is that? That that companies are actively preventing others from viewing their files. It's it's like you want market adoption, right? You don't want to be super limiting and having that scarcity mindset where um, you're just trying to control the whole thing. So that's not a way you're going to get to large-scale collaborative design. Um, what else is to be said about open workflows? Um, for large collaborative workflows, you have two options, I would say, in, in summary. It's like you either use a full, uh, hardcore, professional, expensive package like big companies use, or you can try to uh, simulate those workflows in an easy way and that's what we'll talk about today so how do you do um, collaborative design in a simple way so the basic principles are that one you have to teach people how to be able to design things in an effective way and here like, after I stop talking we'll go through the the free cat exercise and I want to get all of you to be able to to do this uh, feature on a feature exercise where with that you can draw just about anything and render it into 3d uh, in a really rapid way so uh, that's coming but uh, as far as a little more perspective there's the ability to design things that's one side and also there's the ability to to download all kinds of files from various repositories right so believe it or not there's a lot of resources available for that and I'll paste in a, another link so the idea is taking the, ver the real environment that we have or we want to create real things and we want to digitize them so we can share that across the whole world. So once you can digitize something, you can make it abundant or non-scarce. You can share that design, you can have people modify that design. So on one side you've got the ability to create things from scratch. On the other, one, other side you've got the ability to uh, get part libraries from available resources. So what are those resources? Let me uh, give you another link so you can get a good feel for what that's about. Um, I just uh, there's a page called CAD repository so take a take a read uh, there's the chat box take a look at the CAD repositories but basically um, right now there there is a huge wealth of various resources where you can find CAD so that you have you know some motor you're working with uh, a piece of s structural steel lumber whatever uh, pumps or whatever, whatever you're trying to design. A lot of that is out there already, but you kind of have to search for it in various repositories, manufacturer sites, personal websites, this or that, many different uh, softwares such as even Sweet Home 3D comes with a full library of appliances and furniture so you can actually extract those things out of there. Um, the stuff is scattered all over the place and for open source ecology the idea is that we, we try to put it and organize it in, into part libraries uh, of useful useful objects. So you can treat that as a construction set for rapid design, rapid crowd collaborative design. So let's take a look at, so the third and last link I'll point you to perhaps here is uh, part libraries on the wiki. Okay, so that's the third link. Take a look at that. 
So there we keep track of various, so it's obviously part library, across various projects. You've got, uh, what you have there is a visual representation like a gallery within the wiki. And you can click on each product, project or product uh, to get into the subparts and modules. So that's, that's how it works. There's an easy way where you can simply um, document all your part libraries in an easy to access visual way which links to the modular design method where you de when you're designing an object you break it into modules and then you break it into subparts and subparts of those parts but the idea is if you have access to all those sub subparts and smaller smallest atomic elements in an accurate way then you can do meaningful realistic design not just like fake design which is something that you just draw up and you don't know if it works or not or whatever no real technical design based on real accurate CAD so there is a lot of resource on the accurate CAD out there we can generate it uh, and we can now talk about collaborative design workflows where uh, you also the, the other missing link is uh, for the design part is the d how do you design right so that would be the design guides uh, we're publishing a lot of different design guides. That's that's a direction we're recently getting into. So, for example, how do you design a 3D printer? So, 3D printer design guide, tractor design guide, um, that kind of approach where you're saying, here's how you put basic common elements together according to techniques that we have proven or we know that work. And then the average person becomes a, a very powerful designer. And that's that's the basic idea. So, in the future, uh, as more well-organized repositories are created, as more accurate CAD is created by individuals, as people learn collaborative workflows using simple tools, not, not complex proprietary tools, uh, there's a hope that uh, CAD becomes quite manageable for many, many more people, and also then the rapid prototyping like with 3D printers and other machines, that becomes much, much more accessible. So like 3D printers or like the wiki house digital fabrication style stuff. Um, much, much more power comes to the, your fingertips when you, when you know how to use these tools. And I think a lot of the, the success of a, of a modular open source approach, and I think the, the good model is within like the open IFC and BIM communities, they do, do talk about, just like we talk about, make available a lot of different independent interoperable tools that don't create that complex big package that costs you hundreds of thousands of dollars at your uh, you know proprietary design company but instead it's a bunch of open source modules you mix and match so all the issues of interoperability file exchange how do you go from one tool to another that becomes the important part Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way to think about it because then you're not locked into this, oh, this tool doesn't work or it's expensive or you just got this way, this canned way of doing it. No, it gives you all the freedom to be super creative and uh, have multiple options for how to accomplish each thing. So it gives an open ecosystem for innovation that, that can generate uh, better results altogether. Because uh, we believe that um, and we've seen this, for example, just to give you an example with the brick press, like when we published the first brick press in uh, the Civilization Star Kid version 0 0.01 in 2012, uh, we had a CAD guy do the, the brick press, and it was one of those very good examples where we noticed how uh, the professional CAD route or the proprietary tools are really inefficient because you have one CAD drafts person, he's got the software, Nobody else has the software. This guy is a trained, well-trained guy who's a professional. He might, he was a volunteer, so he wasn't that available. So it took us like two months to, to do, like after we had the brick press ready for publishing, like it took us a bunch of time. It was about two two or three months uh, where we were depending on this one guy to generate that CAD. Well, right now, instead, if we have the part libraries of all the individual parts, if we can gather a hundred people around a design sprint with people who know this workflow, you can do such a thing in like a day or a weekend, you know. So, so it's you can, by virtue of numbers and modular breakdown, get to more positive results. And that's why we're approaching like this this way because we're talking about everything about distribution of wealth and power and distribution of creativity, and a and a decentralized world. Um, and that means 
uh, there's more access to everybody and every, everyone participates more. Less people are just the passive, uh, passive consumers and uh, the world is in principle a better place. So that's, that's how we approach this. We definitely believe in the power of the crowds where by modular uh, granular breakdown you can get things done just so much more effectively to the point that right now on our radars things like say we want to build like an entire community or a university or a research center or a building, a workshop, a farm we're developing tool chains and workflows where you can get a swarm of people and just do it. Starting with a small example of the CD home where, where because we're designing the workflows to be very efficient, you can either do it like as a two people over many weekends, or you can get 50 people in five days to do it, things like that. So uh, those kinds of workflows are really powerful because in the economic sense, they're, I like to now use the phrase that they're replacing the need for finance capital as the dominant driver of human development because now you can distribute that process so that the human capital open source design more access is the new fuel because what does money get you money gets you the time of people and the resources and all of that well but if you can get gain access to the resources more directly that's a more accessible way to run a society so economically speaking the the collaborative design route is a big deal in terms of shifting the world from finance capital and the basically the monetization or or what do you say the financialization is the word uh, financialization the the whole world order based on money um, that the, basically the neoliberal order that kind of throws it upside down where uh, then the end result is intended to be much more benign to to everybody so that's that's the idea. So let's, uh, with that little little intro there, let's uh, get right into the, the FreeCAD workflow. So the first question is, uh, is the toolchain degeneracy or does everyone have FreeCAD 16 that they can run uh, right now? So if you have yeah. that, let's mm -hmm. let's do this. And, and there's a little work doc. Uh, I was teaching somebody else to go through this workflow yesterday. And we've got um, a document where actually the... Okay, go into this link because I actually put some notes here. So we were talking about uh, how do you teach? So right now, you know, COVID makes us think that oh yeah, okay, we got to do this effectively in a remote way, right? So we were looking into how do you actually, if you want to learn this and if you want to teach somebody else, how do you do that? Well, a useful tool there is the remote desktop control. And I think that does exist. I know I've used it a long time ago, Timbuktu on Macs a long time ago, but mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, do the remote control of a screen so you can teach somebody by manip by helping them actually on their screen. So that's actually a really effective way to, to think about it. But yesterday, uh, so we actually have this uh, one guy in South Africa who's uh, an immersion fellow who's uh, learning freak out here. And we started the doc that was about the remote desktop control and then we got right into the uh, how do you guide somebody over the internet to do this very effectively? But you can follow page two um, for this basic workflow where the workflow relies on this. Think of any uh, imaginable shape in 2D, extrude it into 3D, and then now you've got this 3D object. Now take any of the sides of this object, which if you drew them in, in 2D and extruded them, it has all flat faces. Right? But you can take any of those faces and now put a drawing on that face and then create another feature by extruding that drawing. So you can continuously take this first from 2D sketch to 3D, continuously add new features to it, whether they are extruded features or poked holes or poked, uh, those are called pads or 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 pockets in FreeCAD. But if you just think about that, if you can get your head around that idea, then you can think that, wow, okay, now I can, I mean, that's pretty powerful. You can get just about any geometry from that. So manually, mm -hmm. you can just sketch it. It's like taking a, pe a pen on your paper and then turning that into a realistic three-dimensional object and keeping on doing that process forever until you get an object of infinite complexity. 
And then you might say, well, what about if the object is made of many, many parts, like a tractor or whatever? You don't like draw it all in one as one block. Well, naturally, you want to create to to draw the individual parts and then assemble that, them together. So after you learn how to create this 3D object, all you need to do is then how to import other objects into your document. Say, say you got five of us working on a, on a project together right now. Each of us can take one object, then we can just simply import that object into our document and then move it around. And then you have relationships between objects that you can then put together into any complex shape. And in our workflow, uh, just as a final word on the, uh, this workflow, because that pretty much summarizes all that we do. Like we don't even get into, like for the great grand public process, I don't even want to teach anybody about constraints or like how do you mesh, okay, so face to face or, you know, lining up on a corner. You can do that just by simply moving with that moving objects and you can see where they are and you can view it on, on any of the planes, but that's enough to get you know just about anything so we deliberately avoid the actual processes of any more complicated things than you need just to do basic design where hundreds of people can be taught rapidly like in an hour can be taught rapidly to all collaborate in the, this workflow so that's basically it so today we'll we'll go through the the process of the uh, creating any form of three-dimensional object and when you can do that you're, you're set then you in, in FreeCAD the thing you use typically is it's just called a merge in the file menu you merge another project into it and that you that other object appears in your document and you can move it around um, and so forth so mm -hmm. let's get into this this workflow that's that's the overview of it if you can cap picture that in your mind that is extremely powerful and I can also tell you that um, for Blender, like Blender is supposedly like, I haven't really learned Blender yet and I will do the same thing for Blender, but as far as I can tell, the, con the if you can get that conceptual idea of how a CAD program works, like what I just described for FreeCAD as a workflow, then you can rapidly onboard to that new tool like a Blender. Like I haven't touched, bl to tell you the truth, I haven't touched Blender like over the, you know, I knew about it for a decade or two. I haven't really touched it. You know, I maybe opened up a little thing here and there, but I can tell you right now that I'm just kind of getting ready for it because I'm just trying to imagine like, okay, what is the equivalent of that workflow that I just told you about within FreeCAD? What is the equivalent of that core concept in FreeCAD? Um, so this is like a mental training exercise because if you can get your head around that basic nucleus of concept, then you can pick up, then your mind will tell you, okay, now I need this, I need that. You will like teach yourself in, in rapid time how to pick up another tool. So I just want to encourage you to explore it because uh, I can tell you that we'll be having the same session in Blender where I can show you this, the same kind of a workflow that in about an hour you can get, okay, I, I can feel comfortable about sculpting a shape into just about anything. And then of course you've got all kinds of other functionalities, but then you ask yourself, well, what are the basic functionalities that I need? And you just um, focus on learning those. That's how we approach this this collaborative design process. We're saying, no, 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 you don't need this all this. I mean, if you want to know the insides of FreeCAD, it'll take your whole life to learn it. Like, if you want to know it inside out. But the, the question of sufficiency is a very important one. What are the things you need to know? And then you ask those questions and learn th those things. Um, unless you make it your hobby to, to you know, just play with FreeCAD all your life. But no, like we've got other things. We're talking about integrated, diversified skill sets. So no, you want to learn something, and then you want to use it to powerful ends, and move on from there. The choice is yours. So with the FreeCAD workflow, go into the document that I see everybody in there. Go to page two. So assuming that you all have FreeCAD, and a lot of it, I must, must say, is um, a lot of the the confusion or like the complexity of, of getting any program up and running is having that program available and pre-configured so that's why we can we recommend the OSE Linux or having that as something that you can definitely view that you know every other person has is looking at the same thing because they've got the same version so that's that's a big part but if you have that all configured then to follow the document 
uh, the Google Doc I just showed you on page two, you should all see that all that all should make sense to you. So, so the thing is, so you got the steps to 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 do the feature on a feature exercise. So the the end point of the of today's uh, presentation is feature on a feature. So if you can do a 3D object and then put a feature on it, a three-dimensional feature, whether a pocket or a pad, and then another feature on that feature, then I'm pretty convinced you can do just about anything in, in FreeCAD in terms of generating complex complex geometries. So let's start this process. So let's do that. So let's start by doing the 3D, three-dimensional object. So you start with a sketch and then you extrude it to 3D. So can you follow that? Can you start a new document and get a, bl a blue screen? Let's see. Are, le let me see if, if I'm sharing my screen, um, can you guys also share your screen so I see where all of you are at? There's a button on the bottom left, the middle one, it says share your screen next to the hand. All right. Oh, let's see. Let me see if that's working. Okay, I got, got. Uh, I don't have Trevor. Trevor, can you share your screen? Because this is actually, pre and, and also Justin, uh, this is actually pretty cool because what this means, and I have to, what I'm noticing here is that I have to keep on clicking on the toggle, the view to tiled view, and now I see all the five screens, and I see that you've all got it. Great. So, except Justin. Oh, hold on. <laughs> you want to um. share? Because I want to. <laughs> so, so here, what we're also doing is we're developing a way that okay, I'm I'm experimenting. Okay, can I teach somebody and actually give meaningful feedback to somebody in real time? And yes, this is possible. Let's see if Justin can do it. Because it's also a oh, benchmark to see like if you, if we can do it, then we can say do it with uh, 50 people maybe. Because we really have to learn how to. So, so bottom left hand corner, Justin, within the uh. Jitsi Jitsi screen. Uh, everything's uh, everything is frozen here. Well, maybe just mm -hmm. just like uh, click refresh on your browser button, and just get oh. back into the meeting and see if you can share your screen. But I see the nice blue screen and everything, and that's the first step. So okay. Um, just like, no, if you can, can you get into FreeCAD and get the blue screen? Uh, it's, it seems like everything is frozen. Like like every yeah. button on every window, I can't even. Uh, wow. Okay, I think you might have to like restart, restart. and stuff. Okay, okay, but we'll continue here, and you we'll, we're taking notes in a in a doc. So you're starting a new document as Justin rejoins us there. Um, go to the part design workbench and as step number two. Okay. Mm, sorry, where was the workbench? I yeah, was trying so, to find it. So in the workbenches, there's a, a button. Um, let me actually take a screenshot. But the button where you select all the workbenches is what we're looking for. And let me see if I... Uh, Yeah, so that's the the button, the workbench button. Um, yeah, I, let, and let me actually, so this is absolutely clear to everybody, let me just copy and paste what I mean by the, the workbench button. So the the workbench but workbench selection is where it says initially it says start in there, but if you click on the start, you'll see that it unfolds a whole bunch of different workbenches. So select the part design workbench. Um, yeah. So yeah, if someone wants to edit that, uh, but that's the go to part design workbench where yeah that's that's cool click on that that start there and you that allows you to go into the 
the part design workbench. So if you go on part design workbench, and it's like in about in the middle there. So you click on part design, and it gives you a bunch of different tools. So that's the workbench. That, those are the tools that are in there. You'll notice that the upper left corner is the new page with like the red create a new sketch if you hover over it which is uh, as shown in step 3 on page 2 click on it and then just select the plane just select the XY plane um, and when you select the XY plane what you'll notice now you're in the official drawing like the this is the 2d design window where you have all the different two-dimensional tools available in there and those are things like lines circles and whatever you've got so you can click on any of those things I would just recommend doing the one that is to create a polyline uh, you can do anyone but each of those will get you a two-dimensional shape so for example if you do a the polyline um, and then close the last point onto itself you're gonna get a closed shape now that's a shape that can be extruded so that's step number one so let me see where everybody is on that so I'm I'm using Ubuntu and I'm I'm opening there's different a desk it's called uh, workspaces switcher but then I've got the looking at all of you guys in one one workspace I could look at the freak out in another okay yeah so Trevor's got a shape um, part design okay that is that freak out 16 for um. Yeah, so you need, um, right, so you don't have a new document. If you, the screen is not blue, that means you mm -hmm. never clicked on the new document. Should be there, okay, right? George, mm -hmm. you got it. Paul, yeah, just do that. Justin, yeah, you're in. So, Justin, click on the uh, <clears throat> part design and start drawing a shape. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Um, Justin, yeah, create sketch, okay. select any plane. We're working on an XY plane. So, now the thing is, go in the upper left. Uh, there's all the information boxes, so go into the model. Well, after you've got the tasks, hit close to get, uh, hit close on after you finish drawing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, and at that point, all the red stuff disappears, all the red points disappear, and that's, that's, you're now in the, you're not, no longer in the edit window. You can rotate the things and move them around by navigating. Uh, I like the navigation gesture style, uh, but you can rotate and move whatever you drew. But the thing is, you don't need to worry too much about moving, rotating things around yet. Uh, what you want to do now, since you're in part design workbench already, um, you can simply in a part model view, click on what you draw, drew, which should be called sketch. So you're selecting that, and now you can operate ah. on that with all the functionality of the part design workbench. So click on a pad one. That's like the yellow thing that looks like a pad coming off of the, of the ground. There you go. So, so yeah, George, pad it up. <clears throat> Justin, pad it up. Yeah, so you guys, um. Paul, Paul and Trevor, you guys got it. You can rotate. Uh, I would select if you right-click... Uh, in a free CAD, I would go into navigation styles gesture where then the left mouse button rotates and the right mouse button 
shifts, translates, so moves back and forth, left and right, up and down. Um, so that's that's easy because you got your mouse buttons allow you to do all the rotations and motions. Yeah, a uh, small question. Yeah. So ha um, all my, my pad button and all those um, buttons are grayed out. How did yep. you get to the navigation uh, portion? Yep, exactly. So uh -huh. you're in yeah. the edit mode. So if you click on task. Here, let me go back to your screen uh. so I can see it. So I go to tasks. Okay. Okay. Tasks. Yeah, so if you're, when, whenever you see the red, that means you're in edit mode. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's the trick. If you can understand that part, if you if you're still seeing the red, that means you have not quit, not not said close in that window. Okay, so how do I um, get out of edit mode? Yeah, so in in your task, okay, so <clears throat> what you should see in, in your task window, you should have mm. a button there that says close. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, good, got mm -hmm. it. And now, go into the model view. So, okay, so in a task, you closed it up, so, so you're out of the edit window. So that's the critical thing. you got to know when you're in an edit window versus you can, uh, you're not in it. So in Sketcher, like the thing, you just want to make sure you get out of that edit window, and then you can do, then you can actually do things with this thing. So next step is that you select the object you've just created. So go out of the edit mode and go into the model view. So model view is where you can select objects that you have drawn up So I'm going to put on page three. So th there's the critical distinction there. There's the the model view and the task view. So you need to get into the model view in order to then be able to select the things that you have in your model simply by clicking on each object in the model is named. So you, you should have a thing called a sketch there. Does everyone see that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So on page three, so if you want to switch back to page three in the work documents, which I'm going to describe it there, um, model view allows you to select all the objects. Okay? So simply click on the sketch. So in your model view, Click on Sketch to select Sketch. And now you can op do the operations such as like padding it. Only thing you can do at this point is pretty much pad it because you don't have uh, an object to poke a hole in yet, for example. Mm. Yeah, so the sketch, click on it, now you can, you see it should turn green, right? Mm. <coughs> should turn green in the view window. That's how you know you're selected. If it's not green, then you got to go back to your sketch. Now, here's the other thing. If you double click on it, you'll notice in the, in the model view, you notice you will get back into the edit window. And that's the last thing you kind of need to know. If you, if you double click, you are back to editing the object. That's the thing. Got it. <laughs> now, if you know that, then you're like almost on your way to liberation here, because th I mean this little this little thing of how you select a thing. That how do you know where you're in uh, 
in model in, in like your model view versus actual edit uh, that's like the critical thing to know okay so if you click on it once you can now pad it so that's that's what you guys have done mm -hmm. okay now you can click OK to get out of there out of the pad so the thing you have to keep always in mind is OK or close that window so that you can get on to the next step so now if you've got the pad well, you can see that it already it also has the sketch underneath it and you can still access the sketch by double double clicking on it and stuff like that but we won't worry about that too much right now so the point mm -hmm. is for the feature on a feature exercise select any face of the object that you just drew and then you can go through the exact same process that we just did which is to make a, fe a three-dimensional feature and you're on your way to to two-thirds of the exercise we need to know so Okay, so I'm noticing that, for example, mm. Justin does not have that yet. So, Justin, um, cl click close. I've, I've got, I've got more than I seem to have more than it's showing up on my uh, screen on the on the Jitsi. Um, uh, okay, so you, you, I'm looking at your screen. You got elements there. <laughs> scroll that bar up. So you have to notice that there's a scroll bar. Scroll yeah. that bar up. Uh, and, can and, you hear uh, me? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. You're the you're miss you're not seeing the close button because the button is above in that window. So go go up in that window. You see the scroll I, bar. I I think uh, what you're seeing there, what what they see uh, on your screen on the Jitsi is uh, different than. Uh, oh, it's different. What oh. I've got, yeah, I think mine. Your uh, my, yeah, it's I think a frozen. Okay. Uh, are you? Do you have your three D shape? I do. I have okay, a. Okay. A, a coin. <laughs> okay, if you got a 3D shape, then move on to the next exercise, which is basically repeating the steps we have just done, which is drawing a sketch and then turning it into a three-dimensional object. So, in order to select a face, you have to single-click on it. If you double-click, you're gonna end up selecting the whole object. So, um, one qu one question: How are yeah. you moving um, your camera around so easily? I'm pressing. Oh, like, um, how am I moving the view in a view window so easily? Yeah. Yeah. So right click and go into navigation style and do gesture. Ah. And got then, you. as I mentioned, left mouse button rotates mm, and mm -hmm, right okay. mouse button translates. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I'm good now. Someone gonna document that? Is that Paul? <laughs> Paul, are you the anteater? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, I'll try and uh, capture that. Yep. So a single click. I'm going to capture that one. So a um, single click will se select one face. And that's what you need to do, select one face. Double click selects the entire thing. You don't want to select the entire thing, just select just a face. 
and then mm -hmm. you can click on a new sketch on that face. And then you can go through this the same process essentially that you did for the first object. So select, yeah, so I see Trevor did it. Um, Justin, are you? I, I had the I had the program crash. Um, I'm at least getting press in uh, starting new files. Mm -hmm. George, are you able to do it? Um, yeah, so we click on a face, yep. and then we... New so once it's once it's clicked, do I double click on pad to edit it or nope, I'm nope. Uh, so once you once you click on a face go back to the button which is create a new sketch which is the red one ah on the left. okay gotcha. so you basically the, the, that's a really cool thing I like about freak out you, you basically take that that face and you declare that to be your new editing when editing plane mm. essentially and okay. that's just like okay, that is super intuitive, um, and that's it. And then you can okay. modify that Close. face. Mm. And then okay. Mm. Gotcha. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oops. I, I didn't catch that. What? So you click. I have the face clicked, but where do I go to yep. new sketch it? Okay. So on slide number three, new feature. Click on create new new sketch. Which icon is that? The red one right here so do you see slide three uh yes Ooh. okay that does not pop up as an option it's a disabled for me let me when see I that pick. so when when i look at your screen you sh you might be yeah okay so what's happening okay so I see can you rotate maybe that object to make sure that you're not selecting like two faces so you're selecting the pad click on another face click on a side face there you go not available Ooh, that's an interesting one Let's see, you're in part design. I'm still in part design, yeah. Wow. Tasks, let's cancel this. Ah, uh, okay. What happened there? What, what was that? So, you, in you tasks, was... I had something open. You, yeah, you, okay. So yeah. I must have been in some edit mode inside, but I don't know what. Yeah. And then now, when I click on just one face, yeah. like the, the option is available. Yep. So, learning okay. from Paul is there, like... So, so say you selected a face, and uh, the actual create a new sketch is not showing up. That means you somewhere like you must be like in edit mode. So go back to make sure you go back to the. What I would do there is double click on whatever you're, you have trouble with, and make sure you just click OK or close out of whatever you are editing. So if you can't find what you're editing, just double click on that on the object, the suspect object in the tree view, it's called the model view or tree view. Uh, just double click on it and then you should be getting into the tasks which has cancel or okay. 
So just click. Like, okay. Wait, where do you, where do you double click? Sorry, well, uh, you double yeah, click on so, the okay, the pad or okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, yeah, it was happening to me as well. Right. So for example, I just did that myself, and uh, I'm not getting the. It's all grayed out. So yeah, because I I'm really in edit mode because I didn't click OK in the tasks tab. Right, so, uh huh. I'll document that one. Yeah, so it's really like, it's really about understanding what you're selecting and what you're not selecting, and whether mm -hmm. you're in model versus task and edit mode. Those, that's like, just about it to what, what you need to do. Um, So I'm, I'm putting in a slide number uh, number four, troubleshooting new features. If you can't, so if, if you select a face and the new sketch does not show up, that means you're still in edit mode. <laughs> what? Solution. Double click on the object What does it mean when, uh, like, the pad or a sketch is grayed out, opposed to um, a pad or a sketch being colorized? If it's grayed out, it means it's not selected. Okay. So if you colorize it, that means you've selected it. And is there like a deselect all button or uh, select all button? Probably. I don't even know what it is. Okay. Just click on the blue screen. Okay. Uh, so, so well, that's a good question. When something is selected, turns green. Yeah, because I was just messing around. I put a a fillet or a chamfer on an object, and it just seemed like it just deleted it, and it was yep. completely gone. Yep. So I just undoed everything till I got back. And, yeah, that um, that yeah, happens. Something weird. Yeah, that happens if, for example, your edge was too thin and like the chamfer was too large and it ate up the whole edge, and that's that's a bug, I think. But it it makes mm. the whole object disappear. Okay. So, yeah. Um. So at this point, we are at. Feature on a feature, so I've, oh man, Justin's got a whole bunch <laughs> of them. Trevor, George, Paul looks like he's on the way, but in essence, <laughs> that's pretty much it. It's like so now you can take whatever feature 
and the features could be like whatever whatever it could be free form drawn could be circles squares uh, elongated holes whatever any geometry and you can work while you it's kind of like rectilinear it's kind of like only at right angles but the point is like if you have anything that's in your original shape that's not a right angle then if you go to that face then you'll be going accordingly mm. at a non 90 degree angle so it's like you can create very complex shape you can't you don't just create like everything that's at 90 degrees because if you come off a plane that's not at 90 degrees then of course it will be angled right so so this allows you to pretty much create any geometry like for example on a 3d printer if you take a look at the the 3d printed pieces for the axes they were generated using this this workflow how mm. create a block punching some holes in it you know punch the belt belt hole punch in the screw holes punch in the hexagons for the the screw tops and and that's all that's it's pretty simple um, mm -hmm. so if you if you get a feature on a then take your feature that you did and then you you put another feature on it and that's that's the whole exercise now the trick is if you really understand this process that means you're you're like you you really get it you can do it in one minute do that whole exercise bam you go from one place to another you have you know how to navigate from edit to to the actual uh, three-dimensional functionality you know how to select between edit and tree view mm. and that's that's pretty much it and then then on top of this lesson if you if you if you create multiple objects you import them into the document and move them around so um, so uh, how complicated would it be say you want to make a hole for a screw yeah. um, d do we have to should we just like make a circle and like make it two millimeters or three yeah. millimeters wide um, yeah exactly that so that? yeah that's it so the thing I haven't shown you but that's actually a thing that like to make useful design you want to know what you do have to do things like what are the lengths of sides and what are say the screw holes so that's where you go if you've got uh, any sketch that you want to edit you will get so if you even on your 3d object if you the 3d object still has the underlying sketch so then you can actually keep editing whatever you drew here by double clicking on a sketch now okay now to make that easy to do uh, the the other one important key is spacebar mm. so if you're in a model view and you click spacebar you hide it mm. and that's a po very powerful thing that's oh. it's, it's like wow great well if you hide it then in your blue screen you might not see anything but then double click on your sketch and your sketch will, will appear Oh. Mm, okay. So now you can re remodel your whatever you drew before, and when you close it, and make sure you unhide the thing you changed, then you have just modified it. Now, um, but if you're in a double click of the sketch, um, you can now use all. Marcin, the, yep. Marcin, I don't hear you. Oops. Yeah, are you still there, Mark? Uh, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you now. I yeah. Can now. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, you got to the spacebar part, and then you cut out. Oh. Okay. Um. Hello, Marcin. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can you guys hear me now, or am I still cut out? We can hear you. We can hear okay. you. Good, good. We just don't see Pretty anything sure. on your screen. Okay. Um. Can you guys see my screen now? Uh, I do not see it. Yeah, I don't see it either. Oh, interesting. Here, let me just cut in and out. Okay, you're back. I see you. Yep. Well, let me share my screen. Um, so, yeah. Uh, here's everybody. But on my screen here, like, if I double-click on a sketch, this is now, everything is in red. So this is now where all these other buttons, like if you select something, like for example, a, a side, mm -hmm. this is like the critical thing you want to, to know. Now you'll see that a bunch of other things have appeared. Like in red, 
you will mm -hmm. see like the fatter red icons and those are all mm -hmm. the constraints so for example for the line that I just selected there mm -hmm. I can hit this diagonal thing which says fix a length mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I can make that now it's like 125 millimeters it's in millimeters so see it gives you that dimension there um, mm -hmm. if I draw a, like you wanted the bolt hole in there so I'm gonna draw this bolt hole and now if I click mm -hmm. on a circle I can go into this radius bar ah. mm. and it gives me I want a 15 millimeter mm -hmm. or a 12.5 millimeter hole which is a one inch bolt hole mm -hmm. there so if I close that and you see the pad okay that's that's a 12.5 millimeter radius bolt hole there mm. so that's the thing uh, so you need to be able to access the constraints and those are con obtained not only by going into the the edit mode but you also have to select something that you want to constrain so you you'll see that none of those everything is grayed out until you hit something like okay i'm selecting this side and then the constraints have appeared so for example there's a there's a per, there's a vertical constraint create a vertical constraint so now that made it vertical okay mm. okay and what you want to do is after you select something just click just mouse over all the different constraints and find out what they are. I show that pretty clearly in my FreeCAD 101 the first video because that's like fundamental stuff how do you constrain things but that's basically if you can constrain lengths then then that means you've got lengths and dimensions and perpendicularity and angles that means you've got full technical ability to design where do you find that video okay so that's FreeCAD 101 on the wiki so let me put a link on the wiki okay. yeah uh, so look at so what I showed you today is lesson 3a and 3b on the link that I'm putting in so here's the last link freak at 101 right. the first three videos go through all that I showed you today mm. Uh, mm. the first video is really useful for a blast it's only like five minutes long for like how do you work with all the constraints um, so now that's that's pretty much it. So so here's a challenge for you guys. If you want to get a, a free CAD uh, basic workflow badge, <laughs> uh, we'll send you a digital copy. It's it's a little badge. It's just we certify people who know how to do this. But if you want to do that, your your challenge is to send me a one minute video to marchin at opensourceecology.org or info at opensourceecology.org. Send me a one-minute video where you go through the feature on a feature exercise. That means you click record on OBS Studio or whatever, some kind of a video recording software, and open up FreeCAD, or you can start with FreeCAD Open and show how you go from opening up a new document to a feature on a feature. Hmm. And if you're a pro at this, I mean it's pretty rapid. Like you can dis like with with uh, this workflow if you can do that in a minute that means you can literally take any idea you have in your head and you draw it out and turn it into 3d like pretty rapidly but uh, first of all of course start with something very simple like a few blocks and lines and stuff like that but just just show that you know how to uh, go through that process mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to get uh, the basic OSC free CAD workflow badge basic free CAD literacy that's our basic basic literacy but with that you can take you can now like if we had say some some design session you could actually contribute meaningfully to design or say you know we're, we're make building a tractor and you want to uh, design a bell spike for it uh, you could you draw a rod and make it a certain length, certain diameter, mm -hmm. and so forth. And print it, yeah. Yeah, and so this applies now. Now you're able to, to, to start designing objects for 3D printing, and to do that, you simply export. You, you Now you double-click on what you have created, and then you select the entire object, and then go into the file menu, and then export SDL. And then the SDL file gets you to 3D printing. SDL for stereolithography file. Uh huh, oh, and cool. and you'll notice that like it's important to kind of understand like I think that's just not correct. 
Um, mm. You know, you have to understand what's happening in your in your part tree. You'll notice that most things will be grayed out. The ones that are blue are the ones that are like the most recent. Now, if you you can make all the grayed out things visible by pressing spacebar. And if you if you unhide them, then you'll see like the old versions of the thing. But then it'll start your 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 image your viewing window will start looking funny. You'll get these uh, because you'll be kind of like showing two things at the same time. Or for okay. example, if you're if you're showing the white lines in your three dimensional view, that means your sketch is still visible. So you have to press spacebar on that. But that's that's. Uh, if you can navigate in your tree view, show like if you're working on making features on features in that workflow, you probably have to have only one object visible for the thing, whole thing to be very clear and don't have any interference with like the old versions of whatever you drew. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And maybe the last thing I'll say about how powerful this very simple workflow is just with a part tree, uh, you can actually, so say you've got this is actually what we're doing right now. So we're, we're designing houses, right? So it's got a lot of pieces of lumber. How would you get out a bill of materials from a complete, fully accurate drawing, which got, which has like hundreds or thousands of these pieces of lumber, or or parts? Well, uh, if you put every part as a single object in your tree, it'll just appear as an object, as a solid object. Mm. You can actually run. Uh, so FreeCAD actually has a, it does have a, actually a, a command line window, the Python console. You can run a mm -hmm. little script which will get you a, a, a file that it simply exports all of the objects that you have into a list. Now, mm -hmm. so imagine you just design a house, you get like this list of a thousand things. Well, you can use a simple piece of software, like you can use... Um, as long as you've got your naming, like you name things, like this is a two by four piece of lumber, two by four lumber. Like if you name everything mm -hmm. that's the same thing with the same name, uh, you'll be able to j to to basically count the number of iterations that some word has appeared. There's a simple, you know, you go on the internet, you have a simple thing that counts the number mm -hmm. of times a thing appeared. So basically, using a super simple workflow, you can extract the whole list of parts and count the number. So you'll you'll get a comma separated variable CSV file of here's the part, here's the number of that part. So you can have this, this uh, it's kind of a brute force way to get a bill of materials. And mm -hmm. probably something easier is going to come up in the FreeCAD, but that exists right now. You can actually pretty much count all the parts, but that certainly saves you countless hours of work of trying to do that by hand. So uh, I'm actually going to put a link to that. So FreeCAD BOM generation. Mm. Um, FreeCAD BOM generator. I describe, I documented how exactly you do this because I mean it's so simple. Anyone can do that. It doesn't require any uh, kind of advanced ideas or workflows. Just thinking about the very simple ways to do things. So let me paste that in a chat box as well. Um, in fact, I'm going to put that into the document because that's actually a pretty cool thing. Uh, slide, duplicate slide. BOM, Bill of Materials Generation. Yeah, BOM Generation. I put that on slide, there it is. slide number nine. Uh, or you can go to the chat box. But very simple. You s um, but that means that you've you've gotten mastery of the, over the <laughs> the part tree. But what we showed you today shows you all that. You've got you can select things. You can simply control C, control V. Uh, actually, within FreeCAD too, so you can copy parts. Like if you're designing a a wall of lumber made with lumber, you can copy and paste things. But basically, as long as each each thing appears a once and it's in the tree view, you can spit it out of FreeCAD and count it. Bam. You just have to keep track of your file, your the part names, like make sure that you're, you know, say you're using a bolt. 
just call it a bolt, right? So then when you when mm -hmm. you export it and you count it, you can count by the word bolt. Simple. Mm -hmm. So as long as you name every single part in your tree view with a reasonable name, you can completely get a full bill of materials. So if you have a very complex design, you automate that in a couple of steps that save you countless hours. Um, yeah. Cool. That's a cool thing, and, it's, and it requires no no major thing. Just a very simple thing to do. So um, you can look at more of that detail. So that's about it. So if any, anyone wants to, so I welcome you to practice this. Do the feature on a feature exercise, and if you want a precious open source ecology free cut badge, send me that one minute video. Um, that means that. Uh, why is that important? Because that's uh, that, you know that's a skill badge. Skill badges are important for the fact that now we know. Like, say you got this skill badge, and we know that there's like a thousand people or millions of people that got that skills badge, and we know that if we if we call upon one of those people to engage in a collaborative design work project, then they could actually contribute meaningfully to it like that. That means we have onboarded all the people to the basic technique already, and as long as we inform everybody of like, what are we doing? What are we designing today? Then we can meaningfully, meaningfully collaborate. Um, I didn't talk much about how do you, where do you save files, but the part library concept is what we use currently. That's that would be another lesson. But uh, what you learned today, you should be able to generate any 3D object. So, any questions on this? Um, I have uh, some debugging. I think I constrained the circle to another point, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to unconstrain. Ah, okay. So in the task view, if you click on task view, you will have so tasks go up task. You will see um, all okay. the constraints. Click delete, and uh, that constraint will have been deleted. I uh, know they deleted my uh, circle. Oh, here. Okay, so you might have deleted not the constraint. So yeah, go to tasks. Um, tasks. So ta no. Well, tasks. No. Tasks. Let's see. So you're in edit mode right now somewhere because I see your. So go back to. Where did your hide that? Okay, so let's try again. I'm uh, data or on this space. Yeah, you should be able by tasks to. If you click on task. Okay, okay. Tell you what, uh, we know that you can get into the edit mode by double clicking something. So double click on something in a in a tree view. Like double click, say the sketch. Right. So now close, close that. No, no, go up, close. Okay. Um, I think I need to create sketch again. Okay, okay. So maybe, um, okay. So teach me that. So, so oh, um. I see, I see. So I think, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you have to be in edit mode of that sketch? So double click on the sketch, and then the constraints appear. Okay. Let's. This is a good question because I can't explain it right now. I forgot how to do that. So um, if you go to, okay, say I've got simple sketch.